so we get ourselves another great episode of Masha Girl Side. Like I was expecting this episode to be very action oriented, dealing with how the events of last episode carried on. But I did not expect to have so much insight and lessons to be learned in character development within the episode. Before we get into that, let's talk about some few changes that I witnessed. First of all, was that opening. We all saw that opening. Um, same music, um, some scenes are the same, but however, they were showing new characters this time and other natural girl abilities. I'm like, okay, we're getting some new characters. So I, that means it's time for a new arc. So I'm wondering, are there going to be three arcs in this um series. So far our first four episodes were that one arc where all the show is Asi Gary and her abilities because there weren't that, that many magical girls in the show so far. But now it seems like we're being introduced to even more magical girls. So I'm wondering how well the company will adapt the series. Seeing how things are going right now. Will they rush it? Will they make their own original ending? Who knows? Or probably this series will be able to get itself another season. I'm hoping for that if they adapt it well. If they don't, I don't know, people. Now, let's get on with the review of the actual episode. My goodness, we got a lot of character development and insight. Let's talk about revenge, because the name of this episode was Revenge and Resolve. With the revenge, it seems like most majority of the Metro Girls in this show, true misfortune is revenge. Um, Yatsumura's revenge was on the murder that killed her family. Serena was on the revenge for what Asagiri and Yasumaro did to her and her best friends. And of course, Nijimi as well. But however, I was wondering about Nijimi. Nijimi played a very interesting role. I loved how angry she was. I loved the facial expression she gave off. You can just tell this girl just full of like hate and rage right now. How she's constantly buying her nails. I'm like, I'm wondering why are her nails off all the way? Or maybe they're just fake nails and she's buying onto them. Who knows? But my guy, this girl is full of triggered, but yet I can see why she's triggered. She deserves to be angry for all the things that she is going through. Now, thinking about this, I was wondering what caused Nijimi to become a natural girl in the first place. We all know she's a pop idol, and I'm not saying because she's an idol doesn't mean she shouldn't, shouldn't feel bad. Because as we all know, in our society, a lot of celebrities commit suicide because they feel misfortunate. It just proves that just because you have fortune and fame doesn't mean you can't always feel happy or feel very miserable. Depression still exists, whether or not you have the dough or not. So I would like to know why Jimmy became a magical girl. I was thinking maybe that she was lonely in the past, but then again, she had her best friend, which also was apparently a magical girl. So it makes you wonder how those who became miserable and became magical girls, I would like to know. I Hopefully we get some answers, insight, something. To fill in my questions. Other than that, um, yes, Nijimi's performance was very well made in this episode. And so were others too, even Serena's um, performance. I don't care what they do with Serena. I don't feel sorry for her, nor do I care. In this episode, she kept trying so hard to play the victim. She was trying so hard to, I mean, like, my goodness, man. She kept going, because of you, my friends are dead. You can probably feel murder and stuff like that. Sierna, you bullied this girl almost to death. You had her thinking of suicide every single day. You killed her cat. You messed up her desk. You filled her shoes with razor blades. You beat her up. You put her in, drowned her in the toilets. And you're about to have one of your senpais to freaking rape her. And yet you want to play the victim. Despite how mad and just disgusted I felt, I did not feel surprised. The reason why I didn't feel surprised is because we live in a society where everyone wants to play the victim. That's how it is now these days. No one wants to own up for what they did. No one wants to take the blame for anything because these days victims have all the power, whether they're right or not. Back in the day, if criminal did something wrong and the victim was the one that was truly suffering, and they'll shame the criminal for it, punish them. But in these days, if you even do something wrong, we find some way to turn around and make it look like you were in the right, people will automatically be on your side. So it just it's felt very relatable in today's society how everyone's trying so hard 
for POWs to feel sorry for them, no matter what you did. Like, even if you killed someone out of revenge or something, people, you want people to feel sorry for you. Or even, I even hear some cases where a criminal try to do something, but they got hurt in the process, then, then later on they'll try to sue the reason why they got hurt by the person they just tried to rob. So then we have those kind of cases where people just could be completely disgusting monsters and do bad things, but yet wants to play the victim. And that's exactly what Cyrano was doing in this episode. It was not working. I have to say, though, she's very good when it comes to setting up the revenge, though, even though there are some variables within her plan, but she couldn't see that coming. That's not her fault. Especially how she separate Nijimi from the group, so Nijimi tried to go get revenge. So at the same time, she can take care of Asakiri and Yatsumaro. However, things didn't go her way. Don't get me wrong, she was doing pretty well. That yo-yo stick was pretty interesting. It reminds me of a lot of cool anime characters that uses the string ability and they cut people up with the string. It was very interesting to see, but however, she was being careless with it in this episode. And before I get on to that, let's talk about Asagiri. Asagiri. I never thought I'd say this, but congratulations. Congratulations. Because the way she played in this episode was also fantastic. She finally did something that I never thought she would do, and that was finally stand up for herself. As in, not take the blame. Not to blame herself anymore. As she was thinking on flashbacks of what Yasumaro said, is I'm always blaming yourself for everything. Other people make choices. Yasumaro said this the best in the episode. She said that all this wouldn't have happened if you didn't bully Asagiri in the first place. If you just went on your business, even though she didn't say thank you or hello like any normal person would do, you could have just left it alone and mind your own business. That's all you had to do. But she didn't want to do that. She decided her and her best friends decided to bully her in all kinds of terrible ways. And then to the point they even brought one of her guy friends to go rape her and stuff. Which is, and you try to find some justification out that is completely wrong in the end of the day. So I'm very glad to see Asagiri finally standing up for herself saying she is not taking the BS no more. She is not going to be the one everyone walks upon. She's probably still be kind of soft hearted but other than that. She, I'm glad to see that she's not going to be taking that kind of abuse. She will become a stronger character from here on out. I don't know how strong, I just know that she's down her starting point at last. It only took five episodes, but still, better late than never. Now, carrying on this episode, back with the flaw was Sierra. Sierra, pretty much, she went overraged. She completely destroyed the building. And according to that, I believe over 50 people were severely injured like I know 19 are dead and 38 are severely injured but does that one mishap cause so many people to hurt and die it's just dumb this is why you shouldn't let others get in the middle of your affairs plan your stuff outright people so others won't get hurt so sh even despite all this Asagiri showed her mercy she teleported her so she back at her desk. But not only that, she teleported her back at Asagiri's desk. So she was looking at the desk and she was seeing what she's done. She's finally reflecting, finally seeing what she's done to Asagiri throughout this whole entire time. And now she understands. So I believe, I don't know. I don't think she's going to be at the revenge no more. I believe she's just going to try to find a way to survive. For the Tempest thing. And that's what I was saying about the Tempest thing. Seeing the opening, I don't know. I did say the Tempest thing was probably fake, and um, the admins are just using it for so the girls can kill each other or something like that. But now I'm seeing it, I'm like, probably that's not the case. Who knows? Maybe the Tempest is real, and all this stuff is just more of a elaborate plan, and they're not explaining well. But I'd like to know more about the Tempest and stuff like that. So finally, I we get to see a new character. We saw a new character, she was on the phone, she found Shio, and I don't know what she was about to do, she had a knife out, and she thought she was about to kill her. She reminded me of one of those girls from one from another, or the girl from, um, Shinubio, and stuff. I don't know, she had the eye patch on, and she was breathing really loudly and crazy night until she took the pills, so I'm guessing she has enough condition, so she's for that she needs medication, like, okay, interesting character. But the question is, what is her power? I'm very interested because she was one of the characters that have been shown in the opening, so she's probably going to have a much bigger role in this later on down the road. So yeah, 
that's it. That is it for Magical Girl Sight Episode 5 review. That was a very good episode. I liked how Asuka did it for itself. I liked how they displayed the power of freaking always playing the victim. You gotta stop playing the victim, ladies and gentlemen. Because sooner or later, when people do it too much, it's gonna become a joke. And no one's gonna take you seriously because you just feel like you're gonna be some whiny person who just wants their way all the time. So I'm glad they took that route. Very well. This episode is well executed and it leaves me wanting more. So I'm congratulating the aside. This is starting to become a guilty pleasure from a alright anime. Because at first it has flaws and stuff like that. And it still does. But it seems like things are getting better throughout the episodes. So I might actually have to scratch it off the guilty pleasure list and say, you know what? This was an alright anime. It's not bad so far. You know, I'm sure they cut some few parts here and there off the manga, but it's still adapting pretty well. So anyways, um, that's like I review. I hope you guys enjoy it, because to tell you the truth, I just got off of work of a, doing a gig, and I am sore. I was at the PGAs with my sister, and it was just, I thought it would be fun, you know? Like, oh, you'll be serving food. No, I was walking all over the place, and as we all know, um, golf tournaments are very big, so walking around in that area was exhausting. I woke up sore as I don't know what today, man. I couldn't even move how exhausted and tired I was, man. Like, I was wondering myself the pain wasn't worth it. But I had to do what I had to do, man. Can't chicken out. Can't quit. Anyways, that's all I got for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and of course, hit that bell icon to get more of yours truly. I am the Macron. I'm Anime, and I am Signing out.